I think mentally it was just really hard for me. I, I kind of froze a little bit. I didn't know what to really do. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Type 1 Lifting Podcast, your CrossFit upgrade. I have a returning guest. He is an absolute savage when it comes to those Olympic weightlifting weights, those movements, the snatch and clean and jerk. Tudor Magda, what's going on, man? Hey, thanks, Tom. Thanks for in the intro, but I'm trying to be a little bit more than just the Olympic weightlifting specialist. I, I know, I know. But like, I mean, you like, we'll talk about that later. But um, I remember in the first podcast that we talked about Dune. Oh yeah. Cause you yeah. were reading that book. So did you, you finish, re did you finish reading it? Uh, I I've actually read the first three books. Yep. Okay. Um, and then I watched both movies. Have you watched the last one? So I haven't seen the second one yet, yet but okay. I wanted to get your thoughts on the second one, because from what I've heard from a lot of people that they're saying, it's like one of the best movies ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't, I think that's a little bit of recency bias, a tiny bit. Um, uh, I would not put it as like one of the best movies ever, but I would put it at as a very good adaptation for what the source material is. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not a typical hero's journey where like you got a character, he goes through a bunch of hardship and then he comes out triumphant. It's actually kind of flipped on its end to where you have a character and you can relate to him. And then it, he kind of turns it around to where it, it's something completely out of this world. So I, it's a, uh, a little bit different in that in that sense and if you read the books you'll have a better understanding about it but have you have you read the books at all i have not i have not i i barely have time to read like you know a 200 page book right now because of my kids and stuff so yeah yeah that makes sense yeah i i just have a bunch of free time because i don't know i just i like to relax by reading so yeah uh, and and uh and you're at you're at school right now so i yeah I, I don't know if we talked about it last time but what are you going to school for um, I'm going for mechanical engineering. Okay. Um, and right now I'm, I'm taking it pretty slow. I'm not taking a lot of classes. Actually this quarter, I'm only taking one class. Yep. Um, and so it's, it's been going, you know, a slow process. I actually took a, a year off, uh, from it completely or mm -hmm. two years off actually two years. <laughs> wow. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm starting to get back into it and that's actually kind of nice. It, it, uh, fits within my schedule and, right now um but you know i don't know where i'll be at moving forward with it but it's just kind of something on the side for now yeah and it's kind of making you feel like you don't have to think about crossfit like at all all times a day pretty much yeah i guess yeah i mean uh, uh my dad likes to joke about it he's like you you should probably think about something else besides crossfit once in a while but uh <laughs> dude i mean I, I i love the sport so much and i feel like i want to do it all the time but yeah you're right it's for now, for where I'm at, uh, I think it's a good thing that I chose to get back into it for now. But we'll see, you know, what happens moving forward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so um, so I kind of want to talk about last year. So you made it to semifinals last year. And unfortunately, you didn't make it, which I, I was rooting for you. I wish I wish you made it. So Thanks, um, so what what do you after you didn't make it into that? Like what was going through your mind? What was your mindset like after? Like, is was it like? Hey, I need to improve on this or I need to change this or what, what was going through your mind through the whole time? Um, I think mentally it was just really hard for me. I, I kind of froze a little bit. I didn't know what to really do. And it, it took a little bit to kind of, um, get back into it fully. Um, but I think taking some time off, uh, I hung out with friends. I, we even did like a construction project throughout the summer, uh, at, one of my friend's house in, in Georgia. Um, oh, you were in my neck of the woods. You should have called me. Oh, really? Where, where yeah. are you? Are so you in I Georgia? Live, yeah, I live in Georgia. So I live in Gainesville. So that's, I like, didn't know that dude. That, that, that's, that's north. Of, that's north of Georgia. That's north. Uh, where is fridge? Uh, what's it called? I forgot the city, the town. Um, whatever, but yeah, yeah I, I think I was in North Georgia too. Okay. So yeah, that would have been really close. Uh, so Norville, do you know where that is? So oh, um, no, it, it's called, uh, no Gainesville is, that's pretty I, far I, away. I'm not sure. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it was a Snellville. Sonorville. S O N O R V I L L E. 
Uh, I think there's an A in there too, but I'm not sure. Oh, oh, yeah, Snorville. So that's yeah, like 54 miles away from where I live. So it's like an hour and okay. 30 minutes. So yeah. Anyways. Yeah, yeah, but like I said, uh, you know, I just tried to take some time away from it, do some, something with my hands. Um, it was it was kind of a a, a kind of a weird experience for me because uh, you know I didn't know really what to do after mm -hmm. that, but yeah, I just. Uh, uh, continue to do something you know work on something and uh that kind of put me through it yeah and so was it was it good to get that break from like not thinking about like the whole summer like you're saying okay this is like the games would be going on here so like but i'm like with my friends like building stuff kind of like mm -hmm. taking my mind off it was that kind of like something was that was it was that kind of your what you were doing pretty much the whole summer um yeah up to the game so it it was a nice break up to the games when the games hit um I got a kind of a second wave of anger and kind of frustration a little bit and, and, uh, watching people competing at the games. But, um, yeah, eventually I got back into training after that and, and, uh, progressed slowly towards uh, where I'm at now. Yeah. And so the, obviously you, that did that light a, a really good fire under your butt, like having like people like from the game saying like, I could definitely beat this guy. Like, and do you think about these people like during the workouts and when you're training mm -hmm. at home? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I I've trained with some of the guys that were at the games last year, and I knew, you know, um, if I was at a healthy mindset, that I could, uh, you know, beat those guys or, or, you know, be close to those guys in a, in a race. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and so um, one of the workouts I saw was the 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 sprint, like the sprint snatch workout where you um you had you i think we think you hit like 320 or something like that like something mm -hmm. crazy mm -hmm. so and what was like my thing is is like you saw everyone else's snatch numbers so what was kind of your thought of you know hitting that high of a number compared to everyone else i mean to be honest i was failing 275 in the war period <laughs> so i don't i don't really know what it is i think i think what the way my body was kind of feeling during that whole weekend um for some reason the the high twitch power output stuff felt more comfortable for me so on the floor i was able to just uh perform and and uh what's what's the word like uh just yeah basically perform on that sort of test but then you know on the other stuff i was kind of lagging behind a little bit but yeah um uh yeah i just went out there hit 275 i i had missed it in the warm area but it, i knew it was comfortable off the floor hit it as my opener and then went 305 and then 325 um and i just kind of stood it up got under it and stood it up i i just <laughs> yanked and prayed basically <laughs> <laughs> yeah i hear you i hear you just grip it and rip it just see what yeah. you can get so exactly yeah, yeah. so w when you were there was it like nerves that was kind of making you act like feel like a little off or whatnot like what 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 was what did, what did you think i uh, dude i i think just um uh, mentally um i think i took a lot of stuff for granted lead in the lead up to it and mm -hmm. uh, i think that the idea that oh i had made the games last year the year before that um and you know i'm a games athlete now quote unquote was uh got made me a little bit uh just kind of resting on my my laurels yeah cliche but yeah yeah exactly so um i think just my mindset and where i was i, I had a great team around me um from a, a local gym here in tacoma washington and they came and supported me and like everyone around me was cheering for me and stuff and i just that weekend mentally i was i was dr like not in it you know i was not myself because of because of my fault like just uh what i had what i had thought about in preparation and taking stuff for granted yeah yeah and so are you still with the same training uh training group from last year um, yeah I, i'm still still with the same uh main coach his name's ed um uh, and he programs he programmed last year and programmed this year as well. I also added in a new coach, um, at two new coaches, actually Zach, uh, who works on my strength and, uh, accessories. And then rich, who's, I've been working a lot with him on endurance and running like a lot of my weakness stuff. So, um, 
And then I also have a recovery and nutrition specialist. His name's Alex and he, he helps me with that. So I have, I have a a team around me too this year. That's a, that's a big, that's a big team too. Yeah. I'm, I'm super grateful for them. Like I know that a lot of the top guys in the sport have multiple guys around them kind of talking to each other. Yeah. And I think that's starting to become a little bit mainstay. You know, a lot of the uh, individual athletes have these people around them, these pieces. Um, And, you know, I'm super grateful to have it in the lead up to this year. Yeah. And so you were talking about your endurance was kind of like lacking a little bit. And now you have a coach for this year. So now, now is it, and that was like running for you. Like, Mm -hmm. like you're like, okay, I could do this. I like this. Is it like, Mm -hmm. is it more fun now than it was before? Oh, I mean, 10 times. Yeah. I mean, I, we'll, we'll see how it translates on the competition floor. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it would be a lot better, but in training so far, it's been, it's been great. And even in the opening quarters, uh, some of the, there hasn't been any running or anything, but some of the longer domain stuff, it wasn't as, you know, threatening to me as it was in the past, like has, I, I wouldn't get as jittery and as nervous for those. Mm-hmm. You know? That's good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And, um, so do you typically, so the program that I follow on Misfit, so the, like every like Thursday and Sunday, they kind of do like a, a, it's called like a mafetone. It's like zone two training. Mm. So where you get on a bike for like 45 minutes to like 90 minutes at like, you know, 150 minus your age, which would mm. be like, you know, two beats per minute for me. Cause I'm so damn old. But, uh, but like, is that something what you do to kind of like on your off days or help out with your endurance? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've uh, incorporated a lot of zone two starting uh ever since september of last year uh we did a a lot of the zone two block stuff leading up to rogue and then um at the beginning of this year and then progressed it to a a more of a higher pace higher intensity to now Mm -hmm. yeah and so are you are you really like pushing it right now since it's come come up to semifinals like 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 pretty much like lying on the floor every day just you know kind of like dying a little bit I mean, yeah, definitely the intensity's uh, gone up. I mean, it's been a test for sure, like mental and physical, um, much more so than last year, just uh, with the the type of training that I've been doing. So, you know, testing myself now mentally, some days I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm slow and, you know, I'm not as confident in myself. But um, I think that overall it'll pay off in the end, even even though some days I feel like crap. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah so do, do you have anybody to, like other than your coaches is there like obviously probably your parents but like are there other people that you're able to talk to and kind of like you know talk to them about your concerns like hey i didn't feel great today like you know and like kind of like not not take you off the ledge but kind of like talk to you and say like you know hey everything's gonna be okay uh i would say like you said my parents my coaches they they fill that role for me um I, as far as like peers, um, you know, same same age. Uh, I, I I don't have that many like training partners or you know people I talk to that much on a daily basis. There are some members at the gym that are really good friends of mine um, that are coming to support in California too. But um, yeah, I I don't know if exactly that the role you're talking about, but. Um, I do have that if that's what you're asking. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it could be anybody like your coaches and your parents. So, I mean, yeah. obviously I think the main group of people is going to be your parents anyway, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you're with yeah. them like all the time, not with them all the time, but like they're, they're the closest people to you. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yep. Awesome. And so you were talking about going to California. So this year's semifinals is at Carson. Mm-hmm. So how excited are you for going to the tennis stadium? Dude, I, I've, I've been watching the game since, uh, 2014 so um yeah I'm, I'm very familiar with that arena that whole vibe it, at least for what they show they showed on camera but um yeah i'm to be there in person is going to be pretty surreal dude i would i would love to be like an athlete just walking out just like you get like you know you get your name announced and you just run to your lane mm-hmm. and like you just see the tennis team and i guarantee you that place is going to be like sold out too mm-hmm. so i, I mean, just like I hope so yeah yeah well i mean it should be so i mean that's the, the old tennis stadium but and like see all the fans around you out in the california sun and just like mm-hmm. slinging some weights and like getting on the bike and stuff like that yeah and just seeing old crossfit movements too it's which is awesome 
dude yeah it's it's gonna be so cool uh i'm curious to see what if there's any like change in the in the venue if they updated anything since since they uh they had the games back in 2016 was the last year but yeah, like I said, I I memorized all the games, events, all the people competing there because I watched like ever since, you know, I've been I've been like nine years old starting at cross. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, um, what's what's the game plan of you heading? The, are you going to be there like a couple of weeks in advance, or like I know you're going to head down, no. but like no, just just that week. Yeah, yeah, that week. I'll I'll be there that week, and um, it's just pretty sunny here in washington so i've been getting some good heat on me during training uh doing some of the work outside hopefully that translates but uh yeah for now i i it's it's gonna be that same week for me yeah yeah you, you need to hit that georgia weather get that humidity or you know <laughs> I, is it gonna be humid yeah i don't know i don't know we'll see i don't, hopefully the weather plays in my favor but we'll see yeah yeah. Well, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing the semifinals back in Carson, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And just seeing like how they, you know, I mean, obviously the workouts are already out already. So, yeah, you know, exactly. at least how they set them up and stuff like that. So you you saw the workouts, you saw the league. And so what did you think about the the workouts for semifinals? Oh, I think they're amazing. I, I if uh, even last year uh last year's events even if they had those i think i'm way more confident with those as well but uh this year if they had this year's events last year i think i would have been happier if that makes any sense with yeah. what you know where my fitness level was at last year so overall i think it plays to my strengths really well okay all right cool yeah. and uh i forgot to ask you so um in the quarterfinals you smashed workout two and so mm. man <clears throat> workout two what was it the, 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 the no the dead wasn't it the dead well you i thought you did so the deadlift oh, oh, the, the about the open. You're talking about yeah the, yeah, open. the, the open that's what i meant i'm yeah, sorry yeah, yeah. the open so um so so that workout you did the opening you hit like some ungodly number of reps yeah, yeah. and oh, yeah, yeah. um and then all of a sudden you got you got dinked for it so yeah. what was the whole what happened to that oh man it was it was funny i uh i think going into that workout um with where my capacity was at, I knew that like each round could take around uh, what like um so two I don't know enough to get eleven rounds ten or eleven rounds um and for some reason in the back of my head I just was like hey I want to get a thousand reps I want to break a thousand <laughs> like be the, the the guy in the world to break a thousand and so um might have done a little bit <laughs> some uh some low uh, hip hit uh, sorry some muted hip deadlifts because <laughs> i was trying to go super fast but i think that that weight was super light for me and i i just uh, i wasn't thinking straight you know and i was just uh cranking on it and then cranking some dubs and then going hard on the rower and i uh looked at the video afterward and i had a feeling like oh, yeah this is this looks kind of bad it looked kind of similar to josh bridges yep. uh i remember that video yeah. back in 2017 um and i was like are they gonna ding us i are they gonna ding me you know what what are they gonna do and yeah they ended up dinging me pretty bad so yeah um i i knew like i'm i know that i'm my harshest critic so i knew that those reps were pretty bad and uh but at, it being the open i wasn't gonna like try and redo the whole thing and i knew I'll, even with a major penalty i would make it forward so um i think i had the capacity for 950 plus reps um but i just I didn't do it right. So I, I think that penalty was completely justified. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I agree too. So, I mean, if yeah. you have like a muted, muted hip or whatever yeah, in the deadlift, but the thing with Josh Bridges, I think he had a fish fisheye lens for on his GoPro. <laughs> no, no, no. I think, I think you're talking about, uh, I think you're thinking of Brooke Wells or, or somebody else. Uh, no, no. Cause, but, cause if you look, if you look at his old video, it's, it's rounded uh, on the corners. So I think he does, I think he did put a fisheye lens on it by accident. So oh, anyway, but know. yeah, it it was it was yeah I I remember that, that I remember that workout but with him so uh -huh. yeah for me on that I I got I think I got I got like a little bit over eight rounds close to nine rounds mm -hmm. and I'm like I felt pretty good about that but I'm like I could have probably pushed it a little bit harder mm -hmm. and so and that's like I was like I didn't I always second guess myself every time mm -hmm. when I do these workouts I'm like I could have done better. And yeah, same I'm, same here. Yeah, and then I'm the jackass and I'm like oh, maybe I should try it again and I'm like. Uh, I mean, 
like they're taking the top 25 now. So do I need to really worry about it? Yeah. You know, to be honest, um, I maybe should have been a little bit smarter with it because had I done a little bit of a well, had I kept that original score and done it correctly, I would have been in the top five in the open and got some prize money. But what if it's like the it's just excuses <laughs> like nobody cares? But yeah, I uh I you know, I probably could have it probably would have mattered a little bit bet more for me, but um, uh, you know, that's not the that's not the goal of the season at all. So um just to make the game. So uh yeah, it is what it is. And to be honest, uh, I think that I, I had a blessing in disguise. I think God was on my on my side for that one because had I done that with the box step-ups, the same thing, muted hip, I would have probably not be here talking to you. <laughs> well, no, you probably would have. But, but yeah, like I, that, that, was, that was one of the other topics. So, like, so when, when you saw that workout, did you read the whole thing and see like your neck has to, like your head has to be like in a neutral position or and stuff yeah. like that? So, how, yeah, I'm, I read it. Yeah. How, how did everyone, how did like all these people miss it? Same reason why I missed the, the deadlifts, to be honest. I think, I think it's just a light enough weight to where people can just hop on the box, tap their foot, go back down. They're trying to rack up reps because that in the row is where you get the most amount of reps. And if you, slack off on those you're you're gonna fall behind your competition so you know i don't blame those guys and i i completely could have been one of those people like yeah if like i i also made sure to extend my hips fully i i probably went a little bit too slow in that workout for those uh those reps because i knew that had i would i get another penalty like i did in the open it's gonna it's gonna be a major detriment to my my placement yeah, yeah, yeah. so I mean, yeah. yeah, that was definitely good that you actually slowed down a little bit. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm super glad. Yeah, because I can, I can imagine like all these people just like trying to haul ass and just like mm -hmm. don't even and, and probably some of these people didn't even read the read the full description too. Which well, is well, I mean, there's no thing. excuse for that. I True. Feel like you should you should read the the description, but um, I'm also a big proponent. Like if you 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 should watch your own videos. You know, you should make like watch it and slow them down and and like look for any sort of minor nitpicks like to be honest i can find a minor nitpick in every workout that i i i do like on a training on a daily basis in training like and then i know to hey don't watch out don't do that in the future like don't on when you're doing handstand push-ups don't uh you know take your feet off the wall before you block out your last rep you know what i mean yeah uh so just little stuff like that 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 can ding you if you if you try and go too fast yeah and so w with the with the rule book and stuff like that they change it like pretty much like every year so mm -hmm. do you think crossfit should, should kind of change the rule book when it comes to movement standards like every year or do you think it's okay um, for them to kind of like mix and match, like just like finagle it here and there uh i don't know i'll have to think more about that one i'm not really sure i think there's an opportunity to change a little bit of how they uh, do the penalty um, but it, like in a way to where let's say you do a certain percentage of the rep which would be very hard to to judge it, uh, for an online person to see but like uh, one no rep is is worse than another no rep. like there's worse no reps than other no reps you know what I'm saying like if let's say you're you're you have a muted hip and your knees uh, bent, bent at the yeah. top of the step up versus if you just have a muted hip and your knees completely straight the energy that it takes to do the second rep is going to be more than that first uh no rep so like different types of no reps if that makes any sense <laughs> can affect different people's energy during a workout uh which is it would be very hard to to judge and you know implement but uh yeah it, they it's it's really hard so I think all athletes should just err on the side of complete caution. Just make sure every rep is completely safe. Yeah. So when you set up to do the recordings, do you set up like two cameras or like what, what's your typical setup? Um, I forgot to set up two cameras in quarters, but I, I was lucky at nothing, nothing happened. And um, so, yeah, I set up one camera and uh, did a, a wee time app. You know what, what that is? Like where they have a timer in the corner. Yep, yep. Um, that was helpful because then I didn't have to have the timer in the in the picture, um, and 
yeah, just pray that nothing goes wrong. <laughs> but yeah, doing two cameras would be nice. I think that I'll do that in the future. Yeah, with your prize money, you're going to just have to buy another camera just for that. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, I I was wa- I was looking at the um the amount of people that are going into the games from semis on e- in each division. So it looks like the West Coast actually lost um lost a number lost like a and lost a placement and moved it over to uh, Australia. So I think I think they didn't. I think you're thinking of Europe. It might have been because because uh, West Coast had nine last year, which they okay. had the same number this year. I think Europe had eleven, and now they have ten, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> Uh, yeah. They moved it to South America and to Oceania, uh, which was interesting. But I think, I guess, doing it with the semifinal registrations, uh, registrants is different than what they had last year. Yeah. So do you think that the East and West should be like the same amount of athletes, like 10 and 10? No, no. I think, I think, um, yeah, no, there's, if, if, uh, a certain side of the country has more top tier athletes uh, based on past games. Like obviously if we go to the games this year and a bunch of guys from West do better than the East, then uh, it's a different story, but based on the past two years, yeah, I think East should get more, more spots. Yeah. So do you think some of the, well, I'm not saying like this, like, so do you think some of the people from the East should move over to the West coast because it's kind of like, it's almost like a weaker field compared to the East coast. Cause you have like all these elite athletes or with it, would you see, well, a lot I of people I don't do that? Care. <laughs> they don't, I don't care. Yeah. Care, whatever, whatever, whoever's in the competition, I'll, I'll uh, compete against them at, at the best of my ability. I don't really care if they, they move in or give more spots or whatever. I think, I think it, it shouldn't really matter if you're trying to make the games. I think you want to, for me, at least, I don't know about those guys. If they if they want a better field or whatever from the east, if they want a better chance, but you know, you, for me, I can't really have that mindset. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, um, what out of all the workouts that are for semifinals, which one do you think is is kind of like? Well, I don't know if you want to say this, but which one do you think is kind of like in your wheelhouse and kind of like almost almost like a home run? But it's like you know, you could definitely do some damage with the field. Oh, I mean, if you. I'm still good at snatching and I'm still good at handstand walk, even if I worked on my endurance. So, uh, you know, we'll see how the chips play out, but like I said, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. And so, um, with, um, if you do, if, if you do make it past semifinals and make it to the games, so mm-hmm. what is, what does training look like for you after, after that, uh, just ramp it up or just yeah. take like a week off or something? I uh, I don't know, man. I got to talk to my coaches. Um, but yeah, probably something like that. I think it'd be smart to take a little bit of time off and then start to ramp up uh, very seriously for the games. Very cool, awesome. Yeah, and so um, you're you you we see like a lot of training camps, like big training camps coming around, like that mm-hmm. are like obviously like Misfit, HWPO, Brute, and all those guys. And so what what was kind of like the deciding factor for you? you know, just staying with, you know, not going to one of those camps and kind of going with somebody else? Um, You know, I thought about it just very for a small amount of time, but I just think that uh, for me as a person, I, I like to train on my own and have, you know, one-on-ones with my coaches and be able to talk freely, have a, have a conversation about where I'm at, where I want to be. Um, and not that you don't, you can't have that in a training camp, but I think there's more factors in play with uh, managing a community environment, and managing a bunch of athletes. Like, you know, what workouts you do, what uh, who, whose weaknesses you work at, at at what time. And there's some, there's probably a, a lot of benefits with that, being in a training camp, like a constant push uh, from your your competitors and training partners. But uh, for where I'm I'm at right now, I think that I I want to work. I like to have blinders on work on my weaknesses. Uh, I know what my weaknesses are like clear cut. So I'm just going to do whatever needs to be done on that front, but not worry about anybody else. Yeah. So has anybody invited you to their camp to train with, for you to train with them at all or no? Um, 
don't know if you'd call it a camp, but uh, m- uh, my friend James Sprague, he invited me. Um, and if we both qualify, I think that that'd be a sweet to do before the games. Mm-hmm. And, and but he, he's, he's not in a camp either. He's he's just on his own. He, I guess you could call it a camp because he's training with Cole Sager a little bit. But um, yeah, he, he has like a, a thing going down there in Spokane, Washington, to the east okay. side of Washington. Yeah. So what? So once in a while, you get a phone call like, "Hey, you want to train this weekend?" Yeah. Or what's the deal? Yeah. He wants me to drive five hours to to, to go train <laughs> with him, and I'm like, "Dude, it's it's a quick turnaround for for semis." But yeah, I, I see where where he's coming from, though. I think we'd get a a good push from each other. God, five hours on a car ride back and forth just for like yeah. a weekend trip. No. Yeah. 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 It's it's quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I but, I would not do that. I mean, for the games, it might be a little bit different because I might be able to have more time, go there earlier, uh, come back. Maybe he comes tra- uh, and travels here for a week, and then we can figure it out from there. Yeah, and so um, speaking of the games, so it's it's down in Texas now, and so it's mainly going to be indoors, and I think there's going to be one one workout outside. So what would you would you like it be to be more outside or to keep it inside? <laughs> Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like it to be more outside. I think it's more fun, but, uh, I've, I haven't really competed that much in 100 degree heat. It's stupid hot, stupid hot. <laughs> so maybe I would have a different answer for you if, uh, if that was the case and I had done a bunch of competition in that, but I did, I did do a ruck run in Vegas when it was like 95. One, How did one, that go? In, in the, in the West coast classic. Yep. Oh, that's right. That's yeah, that's right. Yeah. It went better than I expected. I, I started out uh, pretty steady and then chipped chipped away, picked some people off, and it was a nice event. It was probably my most proud event of that weekend uh, semifinals in 2021. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I was most proud of that. And I think that sort of approach will be nice to do in this this coming semifinals in event one. I think that would be, that'd be sweet to kind of pick some people off. Yeah, it, I... I've always loved picking people off. It's oh, just yeah. like, oh, yeah. it, it's funny. Like, like you think you're just like, you see them so close. You're like, okay, I can pick this person off. And then like, it's almost like the next, the next, the next, and just see mm-hmm. them, just see their faces, not even see their faces. Just like, they feel you just like running, running by, like you running by them. And it's just like, shit, it's so demoralizing sometimes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And and it gives you a little bit of a, a boost, like a, a moral boost. Cause you're like, passing someone and you they're your direct competitor and you're like okay i'm not as tired as this guy <laughs> um, i have more energy um yeah i mean that's that's how you want it to go all the time yeah and especially like you know it after the end of the workout you're like i've trained so hard for this and <laughs> i deserve it dude i i really i would love to have that feeling man if i if i could head in there event one and, and pick people off and have a good finish for me like that would be amazing man i'd i'd love that so much Mm -hmm. now do they have the lanes all set up for for you guys already like do you know like everything going on down in carson i i don't know what i'm i know that i'm in the final heat Um, okay so i think that'll be cool to start out in the final heat yeah that that'd be so dope just like just seeing all like i said like before in carson just seeing all those Mm -hmm. people and you're like the last heat and you're like just yeah sending it the whole time Mm-hmm. Yeah, so start in the final heat, stay in the final heat the whole week. Yep, that'd be uh perfect. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. So nice how, how how far of a, how far of a drive? Obviously, you got to fly down there. So how how long does that take to get down there? Oh, not not that long. It's a couple hours. Okay, it's just on the Pacific Coast. Yeah. So Same are you time zone? Oh, it's yeah. all all nice. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine going from like you know Iowa all the way to you know <laughs> california or something like that and be like just like the whole time differences just jack you up <laughs> yeah yeah for sure yeah so um since we're talking about crossfit so i know you do a lot of reading you do other stuff so what what are some of the things to kind of like you know relax you and not think about crossfit during the day because i know crossfit can be you know take over people's lot take over people's like thoughts all the time so like mm-hmm. during a typical day what what do you typically do to like kind of you know, zone out of CrossFit? Um, I mean, 
uh, the classes, I guess, help with that, uh, doing classwork. Uh, right now, I have a math class that I'm doing, and it's my final math class of the engineering degree, so it's the hardest one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm getting through it slowly but surely. And that, I guess, even though sometimes it is a little bit, uh, it's not as relaxing as I would hope because it's just you have to actually focus and learn the material. Um, but as far as like a relaxing thing, I don't know. I guess I watch TV sometimes, read and go for walks, do stuff like that. Yeah. Do you meditate or anything like that? Um, I probably should, to be honest, more <laughs> meditate more. Um, I don't know. I, I pray, I guess I, I meditate a little bit, uh, you know, with my family and, and, you know, that sort of stuff. But I, I don't really like Zen meditate if that's what you're referring to. No, I, I get you. Yeah. Yeah. You don't listen to like a YouTube video of just like meditate, like a yeah. half hour meditation. I've, I've done that before too. Like the, what's it called? The waves, the, Oh yeah. Yeah. A waves or shoot. What are they called? Like the brain. There's a certain frequency that your brain likes, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I listen to that sometimes, I guess. Yeah. It, it's funny. Cause um, I, I sleep in a different bedroom with my wife because I snore so bad. And so <laughs> like, it's like, it's real. It's Maltay, really bad, bro. You should wear Maltay. Dude. I had two deviated septums and I got them. I got them oh, surgically. I got, yeah, I had my a, dad got the same thing. Yeah. I got them surgically fixed and I still have sleep apnea. Like they want me to, they want me to get a, uh, and this thing called an inspire, which is like, you'll see like a huge square, like a, a decent sized square on my chest. And it and like the electrical the electrical car, um, wire circles around your nerve that causes you to snore, and so you literally have like a remote control and cl you click on the on the square, and the electricity thing just fires up, so it actually shocks your nerve so you don't snore. Hmm. I've never heard of that before. I yeah, wow, that's kind of crazy. Uh, have you heard of a CPAP machine though? Yeah, I've tried those, and it just I can't I. It's just like the thing on my face. I tried it on my nose one time and I got to constantly keep my mouth closed and I didn't have mouth tape at the time. So every time I opened my mouth, it's like air just started just like going, going out. What it's about all... like, like the temperature of the room? Have you played with that? No, I haven't even done that either, but it's just and, like. And also what you eat before too, like, like the timing of your, your dinner, uh, that might change things a little bit too. Yeah. From I what usually... I've heard. I usually eat at like seven o'clock, so mm -hmm. seven to seven thirty, and that's it. And then I go to bed at ten. Uh, a good book for you would be uh, "Breath" by James Nestor. You have that? No, I, you got to text it to me. Like I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta remember that. So I, I'll text it to you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I'll, for sure. Yep. Yeah. So it's so um yeah like I I always see my wife like if she doesn't sleep I could see on her YouTube channel because somehow it's connected to my phone. You could see like her like half hour meditation sessions so she can go back to sleep. Oh yeah, that I I I don't really play with that because like I feel like if I have to go on my phone and you know put stuff in, I think it's it's too late at that point. I lost another hour and a half of sleep. <laughs> uh, but I, yeah, I I guess if that if that helps, I I like to read before bed. I just have like a soft uh or a low, was it like less bright night light, and I just read a book and then turn it off. And, yeah. Do, do you use those blue light glasses at all? I think I have a pair, but I haven't used them in a while. I probably should with school and everything. Yeah. Cause you're on the computer all the time. And just like, I, I always, when I was Not recruiting, time, but yeah, when I am on, on the computer. Yeah. Yeah. When, when I was recruiting, I literally had like two monitors like I have right now. And I mm -hmm. always would have like those blue blocker glasses on because like, it was just getting like really bad. What, what recruiting, vision. what recruiting were you doing? So I was doing medical recruiting. So I would like recruit for like nurses, medical assistants, um, nice. like uh, front desk receptionists, mm -hmm. like any, any like full bottomists, like anybody in the medical field except for, for physicians. If like some company would call, like call our group and say, hey, we're looking for X amount of people for this, mm -hmm. like for this, like, can you fill up, help me help us fill them? So we'll go on like Indeed or any other position, any other like, you know, resume platform and call people like cold call them. like nice like yeah. they, they see my number they'll like and especially i'm in georgia and i have a massachusetts number because that's from originally from mm -hmm. and they're like what is this massachusetts number and they think i'm a spam caller and so they just get pissed off and they automatically say on the phone like who's this and so you know just stuff like that but then um i would talk to them and tell them about, about the role 
mm-hmm. then get their information, see their like, you know, experience, what they've done, you know, why don't so they were in a certain hospital doing this? No, no. So or, I was working for a staffing agency. So we would work with multiple hospitals at okay. the same time and, and, and fill those roles. And so, oh. um, so yeah, so like we would just send them over with their resume and say, yeah, we'd like to interview them. And we set them up and you know, if they get hired, they get hired and they're on contract or they're direct hire. So stuff mm-hmm. like that. How, how are you? Did you try and get out of the medical field for a reason? Like, is it, is that, no. A- no, it was so. So what happened? I've been in the medical field for like I think it was like sixteen years. Mm-hmm. So I've done. I've been in been in the hospital working in the emergency room as well as a um, Air Force uh, med- medical technician for oh. for like seven years in the uh, seven years in the Air Force, and then oh, thank you for service. Oh, uh, don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about it. Uh, and then like twelve years of working in the emergency room. So I was working. Actually, I was working in Boston at the time when the Boston Marathon bombing hit. Mm-hmm. And so I was like taking care of all the patients that came in there. Mm-hmm. And then um, when I moved to Georgia, I worked at a children's hospital in, in Atlanta. And it was like one of the busiest emergency rooms for the, for kids. Mm-hmm. And so you would see crazy, crazy stuff. Like mm-hmm. the stuff I've seen is insane. And it got to the point where I was working every other weekend. And so my wife had, two, we had two kids at the time. My wife, my wife's like, okay, you can't do this anymore. Cause I'm literally having the kids from Friday all the way to like Monday mm-hmm. by myself. And you, you can't help me out. So, mm-hmm. and so it's, she's like, I'm like, okay, so I needed to do something else. And so that's when I got into recruiting and kind of went from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. That, that put thing, put the, sorry, puts things in perspective. Like, uh, man, there's a, there's a lot of tough stuff out there. Yeah. And doing, doing fitness for fun is uh, not that bad. No, it's not. No. Yeah. And like, it's the, the worst, the worst things I've seen are like, a, like abuse cases pretty much. Mm-hmm. So mainly with kids, it's yeah. like, it, it gets me so pissed off. Like I want to like, just beat the shit out part of my French, beat the shit out of these parents mm-hmm. for just being scumbags and, or like just being so stupid. They don't know what this go, what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And then I would see like, kids getting to car accidents and they don't have seatbelts on because the car that they have, they don't have enough seatbelts for the kids. Oh shoot. Yeah. And stuff like that. It was, yeah, just this, you know, it, it, it get it, sometimes it gets to you a little bit, but it's just like, you got to think of it as like, you know, you're doing this for a reason. You're <laughs> help, trying to help as many people as you can. And yeah. sometimes, sometimes you can't help people out. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's, that's super tough. I mean, there's a bunch of those cases out there. And it's a lot of stuff that people don't see and uh, they don't know about, so they don't they don't really pay attention to it. They don't. It's not in the forefront of their minds. But yeah, man, that's that's crazy. That's a story. Like going from that to the recruiting and now now podcast. <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason why I left recruiting was because my daughter had to go to like occupational therapy and speech therapy, mm-hmm. and so it was just too much for us to for me to like recruit and go there at the same time. And so I pretty much was like, okay, like I'll, you know, I'll, I'll just help out around the house, be like the, you know, stay at home dad pretty much just, mm-hmm. just to take Respect. care of her and send stuff like that. Yeah. And so now, now I'm looking for another job again. So, so we'll see what happens. Okay. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So it's all fun, but I do podcasting for fun. And ho- if I can make this a full-time job, I would love to. Dude. Uh, hopefully I help you out a little bit. <laughs> no, you do. You do. You do. So, um, but, uh, but anyway, so we're, I, I wanted to ask you about recovery stuff too, as well, because I don't think we've talked about that in the last show. Okay. So what do you do for like recovery purposes? Do you like, do you like an ice bath? Like what, what's the kind of protocols for you that kind of help you keep your body in like in good, in good shape? Um, you know, I've been adding little things here and there. Um, I started doing a cold shower in the morning, um, and then kind of the hot shower at night. So like the contrast kind of puts me to sleep a little better. Um, and then just, you know, the mobility stuff, scraping and flossing and, uh, uh, foam rolling stuff like that at home. But, uh, you know, I, I don't have any like crazy protocols cause I don't really have access to like, a um, you know, these high grade machines of like cryotherapy or red light or, uh, I mean, I, I have used them before and I've had, uh, you know, friends invite me over to their facility and do that type of stuff. But, um, I don't know. I don't really know the benefits. I haven't really done that stuff long-term. So 
if I if I did have stuff like that, like LeBron does <laughs> spending a million dollars <laughs> on his body every year, I think that that'd be pretty sweet. But yeah, right now, not that much. <laughs> yeah. So so speaking of LeBron, have you seen the picture of him with his shoes off? Oh yeah, I have. Yeah. With that like little yeah. pinky toe, like pretty much yeah. is like that's on top. Right. Oh, it's so gross. <laughs> yeah, that's where they they wear insoles on their shoes. Uh, so his his PT guy probably took like a a mask of his foot and like made the insole so it, he doesn't feel it like when he when he walks on his in his basketball shoes. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't get it either. Yeah, have you tried those like toe spacers before? No, no, I, I've seen them before, but I haven't tried them. Are they good? I well, I I've used them a little bit, and it's just like supposed to like spread your feet out a little bit. But the problem mm -hmm. is, like, I wear Nikes, and so they kind of mm -hmm. like the, I wear the Metcon, so they kind of keep your feet in a little bit yeah, yeah, compared narrow. to that. And so, and so, like, it's it's great spreading out, but like I can only have them on for like not that long at all. Like it probably mm -hmm. like five five to ten minutes. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Uh, I wear I wear pretty wide toe shoes because I have like some wide feet, weird looking feet. Uh, yeah, they're like small and wide, so I have to wear. Uh, <laughs> for the longest time, my favorite shoes were like the Nanos, the originals. Yeah, uh, like Nano Twos, Nano Eights, stuff like that. The ones that are pretty simple and they have a wide toe box. So do you do you wear tears? Because I, I know you wore tears yeah, a couple of years those ago. Those are nice too. Yeah, they they. Uh, they have a wider toe box as well. Yeah. So do you have their um their lifting shoes too? The lifters? I do. Yeah, I, I don't really like the wider toe box for that specific purpose. Um, okay. But it's not a knock on them. It's just like just for with my foot. I think every athlete and every foot is different, like the type of shoe and stuff. And if you have a good sponsor, they'll kind of mold whatever shoes they give you around their your foot, you know. Yeah. Makes yeah. So, do you think with the lifters that like the, uh, their lifters, do you think it kind of keeps your feet moving around all over the yeah, place? And that, yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay. I, I like it to be more scrunched in, like the Metcon or um, the the lifters. I think even more wider than their actual base training shoe. The, the it's just the tier shoe, which is yeah. weird in my opinion. But, yeah. Yeah. I actually bought a new pair of lifters. I think it was like. Four or five months ago, I think, mm -hmm. and there I got their uh, Nike Ramal. I can't, I can't pronounce it. The Ramalos, whatever they are, like the Romayellos. Yeah, Romayellos. Yeah, for the four, they think the fours. I think, uh -huh. and and I had the threes before that, and so they had the, with the threes, they had that big thick Velcro, like mm -hmm. in the middle, and it kept my feet like so secure. And then I have mm -hmm. the the fours, and mm -hmm. now there's like two straps, like one one on the bottom and one on the top. And so when I do clean and jerks. It mm -hmm. just feels like my back of my heels, like ready to fall out. Interesting those lifters. But, so I, I would need to see a picture. I'm not really sure, but uh, like two straps on the on the front or the back of the. No, 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 no. There, there, so there's one strap on the top where the tongue is, and then there's another strap on the bottom of like where the where the, the like the base of the yeah where the where the where toes are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of like the Reebok one. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and it's yeah. like so weird. It feels like like feels like my feet are gonna fall out every single time. Interesting. May, well, maybe the tier ones would work for you then. I guess. Did, have you worn those? No, I haven't. I I pretty much stuck with Nike the whole time. Mm. Yeah, they're they're pretty good too. Yeah, maybe if anybody has a size twelve, I'm available. So. <laughs> Dude, I'm a size nine, bro. I have small feet. Well, I mean, I'm I'm taller than you too, so I'm like six. Yeah, six. I guess that helps. Yeah. So, <laughs> dude, yeah, dude, I actually wore eight point fives. I I asked uh, all the noble people at the games for eight point fives, and they just like kill my feet now. Like I don't know why I asked for such a low size, but did, yeah, nine nine. Did you like stuff. Did you like the nobles at all? Did I like them? I think I would have probably liked them more if I had gotten the right size, but True. I really. I like the the runners, yeah. They're kind of nice, and uh, you know, honestly, they know what they're doing. All the shoe companies know what they're doing. So if, if you ever want to sponsor me, any shoe company is welcome. To sponsor me. <laughs> yeah, I I had a pair of Nobles on. I I bought a pair of Nobles for like trainers, and yeah. like they were great the first workout, but then after that, it was just like so uncomfortable that I was like literally made of my 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 professional lawn shoes now. So if mm -hmm. I'm mowing the lawn or or doing yard work, like I'm putting those bad boys on. I did actually do the construction work in Nobles now that you mention it. <laughs> yeah, I did all, all the construction stuff in Georgia. 
and uh, they went from like being nice and pristine to just dusty. Trash. But they held up. They held. They have the whatever material they use is like Kevlar, I think. Yeah, and it held up way better than another shoe would. Yeah, I re- I remember speaking of Kevlar. I remember Reebok actually made a shoe yeah. with Kevlar on it. And uh, I actually- the six is no. Nano six, yeah, Nano six. Yep. Yeah, I bought a pair and I was wearing those for my hospital shoes and like uh-huh. I was like, but is this is this a smart idea? Because I'm like literally on my feet the whole time. So uh-huh. and I literally have like Kevlar like right in the middle, of, right in the middle of the sole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. So, anyways, um, so it, it, are you, what are you wearing for lifters now? Um, I wear, I don't really wear lifters to be honest that much, but I if I would. I would probably wear the Reebok ones that I got a while ago. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Right. I don't wear them that often, so they're still pretty in pretty good condition. Yeah. Why? You just feel like kind of off when you lift at all, or? I think I think for our sport, like it requires you to kind of lift in any sort of shoe, so you got to get comfortable lifting in in any nano or tier or whatever base training shoe, and and I think even for like the snatch ladder coming up, for example, at semis, like. I'd probably, I'd want more of a, le- less of a kind of constricted lifter than, you know, a base shoe, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've always heard like, you know, especially with lifters, like you say, like you need to you not wear lifters like all the time. Cause you're going to get, mm-hmm. you know, used to them. And like, even if you do like a snatch with like in a run or whatever, like another workout, it's going to mm-hmm. affect your lift. Cause you're so used to with that high heel. Yeah. I, that could be the case too. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we're getting close to the end. So I got those rapid fire questions again. So do you, do you, rem- do you, do you remember any of them? I think last time you asked me like, what books or whatever. That, that's yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, first one is what are your goals for the rest of the year? It could be personal, like business, like college, like whatever, like what are, what are the goals that you have that you, that you want to hit by the end of the year you just do just win as many events and uh, do as well as all the competitions in the rest of the year and uh make to the games and stamp my uh my place and and the in that field this year nice. and as far as school goes uh finish up this math class not no funky business and just you know pass it and uh yeah that's pretty much it yeah when's the math when's the math test uh the finals right after semifinals oh gosh okay yeah Yeah, it's okay it's probably a good uh timing actually because then i could just and the the days after i can just study so Mm -hmm. yeah that works um so i don't know if i asked you this one so what what's something that nobody really knows about that you really like to do i don't know man (laughs) <laughs> uh, what, what do i like to do i mean dude i just have the most boring life i <laughs> just do walk at school and do training man i uh man i don't know uh i guess i like to hike they, they have some good mountains here uh really nice views here in washington yeah um and uh you know i've i've played uh oh i last summer i played pickleball i guess that's a thing. oh how, how do you like that it's dude, it's fun. I mean, it, it's uh, it's not as tiring as like tennis or anything. So, it's just you know, sit in a in a spot and play. Yeah, and it was. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Nice. So, have you? You need to follow this guy. He's a uh, a CrossFit and pickleball like meme guy. And so, oh, really? uh, his name's Evan Slaughter. He is. I actually interviewed him like, on my podcast. S L O O T T or S L A. A S L A U G H T E R A G H T. Gotcha. Yeah, he's he's like a heavy set guy, and he's like he's hilarious. He's hilarious, and so is he, he that guy that what's it called? He's got a mustache. Yeah, I've seen him before. Uh, he was like in some RX Smart Gear videos. Yep, yep, yep. Oh yep. gosh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Did, did you did you see the one where he was um he was with this other dude and he the other guy had a speedo and he's like all tatted up and they were doing like these. Uh, they were, no, I don't think so. I, oh, I saw I, the one where he was like doing a bunch of jump rope stuff, and I was, uh, "What is this?" <laughs> I just like scrolled. I was like, "What are you doing?" Bro? <laughs> yeah, he's he, you, shout he's out a, to Art Smart Gear. Yes, yes, and uh, 
he he does he does pickleball stuff too and it's 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 pretty good like he's all about pickleball that's that's his jam so um so are you look are you gonna start doing that like more often too as well just to kind of like do something Dude, i mean if i find people to play with because like i don't know i i wish i had somebody to play with on a regular basis i had i had a friend that i played with last summer actually in georgia all the the guys that were in construction were, were playing it so we all like took turns and and played together but um yeah if if i find a you gotta find a league group. man i gotta find a group yeah you're right facebook group always go to facebook yeah yeah exactly <laughs> I'll, I'll figure it out if i if i hop in one day and talk to some people on the course and maybe i can join their their group yeah yeah or you could just look at the college like board to see if there's like a pickleball like team or whatever they they have i guess they have pickleball courts here uh i'm actually in the parking lot where the stadium is right now um but uh i don't know uh, who goes and wh who uses it. and you also have to pay a fee oh forget which that is weird. like like i pay the tuition for college and they make you pay like a 200 dollars fee per quarter to to use the gym like these man these like public colleges got have gotten like super uh <laughs> oh i know i know yeah. <laughs> i i know I know. So when you, uh, this is not part of the rapid fire questions, but like when you walk around college and stuff like that, do you kind of like stick out compared to everyone else at all? Or are you just like, I hope not. I don't know. I don't, I don't think about it that way, but no, I mean, there's, there's a whole bunch of different people. It's like, there's, it's public. So like anybody, there's athletes, there's engineering students. There's, I guess in my engineering class, on the other hand, yes, I probably do. I'm a, I don't think that you see you would see as many like athletically inclined individuals. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, but it is. Does it, it is. does anybody in your class ask you like what you do or like? No, nah, no, nah. they're just on their phones. They're busy with their own stuff. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, so next question. So what? Um, what's the what book are you reading now? Do you uh, you said you finished yeah. all the all, all three Dune books. So like, well, what do you want to now? Six Dune books. So I oh, haven't geez. finished that quite yet. Uh, and yeah, they get really weird. And I don't know if I will finish it because I, I just <laughs> didn't understand some of it. But right now I'm reading Shogun. Um, there's actually a series on Hulu that is exactly that. Uh, the book it's the story of the book and uh yeah i'm reading it right now it's pretty okay cool. you, you don't read any self-help books at all do you self-help i have yeah i have plenty of them um i can't really think of one right now uh uh shoot there was one with a baseball guy that i have I, if i saw it i would tell you but yeah you're, you're good you're good yeah because like when we were talking you talk about like dune or like other books that you've read that are yeah. like not like self-help so it's hard to uh, get through self-help books dude I just, it's just like uh, it's pretty dense. Yeah, and, and you want to digest the information, and like you know, put it in practice. But um, the easier stuff, like the narratives and the novels, I I can read those and and kind of relax a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's a good cheat cheat code for the self help books. Huh? What's it? You, you go on Chat GPT <laughs> and say, I want a um, summary. <laughs> Yeah, a summary or just like in in detail, like tell me what like like I read this. I, I wanted to read this book called The Energy Bus, and mm -hmm. so it's like a really short one. So I was like, you know, I don't, I'm not I don't know if I'm gonna have time to do this. And mm -hmm. so I was like, I went on ChatGPT and I'm like, all right, give me the cliff notes of the Energy Bus by this person, and so and give me a good detail, like get, make it make sure it's like detailed too as well. And so it gets all in detail of like what each chapter is and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And so you can learn from that. And then if you kind of want to learn more about that chapter, you can use, and you just type in and say, all right, give me more information on this, on X chapter. And it'll just go even further in detail for it. <laughs> so. Dude, yeah. I mean, I, well, the thing, here's the thing, like I kind of uh, like the examples though, that they have in the books more than the actual kind of cliff notes. Like I feel like that's a better way to relate with it. And when they, they kind of applied in real life. So yeah, I, I would, I, I don't know about this whole AI thing. Like, I feel like people make <laughs> it seem like it's uh it'll make everyone's life easier, but I feel like it's just a fast track to insanity, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's crazy. Like all AI stuff now is like, people are like using 
using like like Mr. Beast or something like that, using his words, and he's not even talking, and he's like saying yeah, like, you yeah. know, hey, the I'm gonna give you a like tenth. Trump and Biden talking to each other on like yeah, Facebook exactly. Room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. It's crazy. Like the stuff that's going, that stuff that's coming out now. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's funny. Yeah. Um, next question. So, um, I know you are you sponsored by RX Smart Gear at all, or I mean, pretty much. Like uh, Dave's a really good friend of mine, and he's helping okay. with a lot of stuff. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, I, if you if, if there's any sponsors that want to sponsor you, like, <laughs> what are the what are the kind of sponsors that you're looking for? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, any sponsors? <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. I just I think that there's a whole game within a game and that stuff, and I'm not really well versed in that. Uh, I just like to compete in fitness for fun, and I I probably should be, and I will be learning that stuff more as my career progresses. But yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll, we'll see with that stuff. I I haven't I have an agent, and yeah, he's trying to help me out. And uh, but it all hinges on like performance at the end of the day. You know, like you can't you got to get to a place where you're comfortable in, in your own skin and on the competition floor, yeah. uh, no performance anxiety, no more things that like last year where I just kind of take it for granted and, you know, uh, do that type of stuff. So that, that comes first. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah I mean, I would, I would want that first too. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, that's my philosophy always. So. Yeah. So um, the deep question that we have, so I, I don't know if you changed it at all, but like, Let's just say it's your last last day on earth and you're like all your friends are around you. How do you want people to know you as? Um I I would say I would say I would want to know be known as like um uh, like a humble, gritty, faithful, and compassionate guy, like just overall kind of uh being able to to go through obstacles and regardless of of the the outcome and have faith you know like continue to have strong faith as a as a christian man and and uh uh yeah that's that's all i want to be seen as nothing too big i don't i don't care for anybody writing my name in the history books uh i think the only name that should be written down is the name of uh of christ so yeah that that's basically what what i want to be remembered as Okay, because I remember last time you said you were you wanted to be a fighter, so uh, that was one of generic. Them. Yeah, I just <laughs> I was I was probably nervous or something. No, it's it's okay. Let, listen, this podcast has been like awesome. So the second time around, you're actually getting that you're actually getting used to it. So, dude, maybe maybe I should do it more often. You should, man. You should yeah. absolutely. Yeah, you, you dude, you're you're comfortable. So thanks, man. And Appreciate I can give you I can give you tips on it too. We can just go dry run. You dude, know, yeah. Just, just tell me. Tell me if I'm saying like or um or whatever too much. Dude, I am so bad at that. I people so people say so... like and everybody in the comments are lighting you up like, oh, your favorite word is like. Oh, his favorite word is Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Or he's he's talking trash about this person. Yeah, but... I I don't really want to listen to myself on the edits and stuff. <laughs> and so it's just uh I, I really try to focus on you know, try not to say like or um or. Dude, I mean, like you're that. you're professional. I mean, coming from uh, the recruiting, you you probably have to be very concise and making sure everybody knows where your head's at. So yeah, yeah well, it, it's it's funny because like some sometimes I really have to be on the fly when they ask me questions or like I have to like veer I, exactly even with podcasting, I have to veer off to like something that's not even on my list. So it's just yeah, that's different. A, so that's a good domain to come from for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, last question. So where can people reach out to you if they have any questions about like, you know, maybe having you as a spot, like a sponsored mm -hmm. athlete, any questions on um, like your camps or whatnot, or I, I would say I, I work closely with ripple sports, uh, right now for my agency. So if you were to, to talk to Bijan and, uh, you know, have any questions about that, that would be amazing. Yeah. Um, and then as far as like, athletes coaches whatever on on instagram would be the easiest for me to to find uh people uh i'm not on it a lot so um hopefully nothing gets lost in the shuffle but um yeah that sort of stuff all right all right and so how, how did you how did you what made you decide to get an agent um i i just you know i think like i said i'm not very well versed in 
the whole sponsorship gig and talking to companies. I don't know what they're looking for as much. I don't know the fine print as much. And I feel like I want to have someone I can trust in my corner to, to work on that stuff. And right now I'm learning a lot from, from this agency that I'm with uh, currently. And they're, they're, you know, kind of helping me in, in the start of my career uh, and kind of guiding me. And hopefully with my performance, we can start to make, you know, progress in that direction. Cause to be a professional athlete, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Well, man, thank you for coming on the show. I really do appreciate it. And especially mm -hmm. literally doing this whole podcast in your car. So hopefully you're pretty comfortable. <laughs> so. you know, I need some air. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, um, I'd love to have you on after semifinals and see how everything went and kind of, yeah. you know, get your two cents on like the workouts, like Carson mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Dude. Yeah, absolutely, man. For sure. Awesome. All right. I'll talk to you later. All right, Tom. Have a good one.